Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending on where you are in this world. God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Today we're continuing in the book of Isaiah, and we are in chapter 5 in the Old Testament, in the King James Version of the Holy Bible. And will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved touching his vineyard? My well-beloved hath a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. And he fenced it, or he dug it up, and gathereth out the stones thereof, took all the stones away, and planted it with the choicest vine, and built a tower in the midst of it, and also made a wine press therein. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes after all his hard work. And it brought forth wild grapes, which are sour and worth bitter, and they're not, you can't do anything with them. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. Because this is another instance of them turning away from God, where he set them up and they fell away. So here he's saying that he made this beautiful vineyard for them to live in and to have, you know, and expecting them to be fruitful in their works. Instead, he got wild grapes. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to or come. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof. The hedge is his protection. And it shall be eaten up or consumed and break down the wall thereof. And it shall be trodden down or trampled underfoot. And and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, and there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel and the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment or justice, but behold, oppression and for righteousness, but behold a cry. So here they're oppressing the people, the poor and the widows, and and um, they're crying out. Woe unto them that join house to house, or accumulate houses, that lay field to field, or accumulate fields, till there be no more, that they may be placed alone, or dwell alone in the midst of the earth. In mine ears, said the Lord of hosts, of a truth many houses shall be desolate, even great and be fair or beautiful ones, without inhabitant. Yea, ten acres of vineyard shall yield one bath, and that's a one-tenth of a homer, and one homer equals one-tenth of an epoch, and an epoch is a quart. Let me double check that. I don't want to give you the wrong thing. I think it's a quart. I was wrong. An epoch is 20.8 quarts. It is one-tenth of a homer. And a homer equals 10 epochs, or 6.25 bushels. Hardly anything as far as bringing in a crop. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, or pursue intoxicating drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them, till they're drunk. And the harp and the viol are the stringed instrument, and the tabret, which is the tambourine, and the pipes, which is the flute, and wine are in their feast, but they regard not the work of the Lord, Neither consider the operation of his hands that provide for them. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and their multitude dried up with thirst. Therefore, hell or Sheol 
hath enlarged her mouth, and opened her mouth without measure, and their glory, and their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoices shall descend into it. And the mean man, or the people, shall be brought down, and the mighty man, or each man, shall be humbled, and the eyes of the lofty shall be humbled. But the Lord of hosts shall be exalted in judgment, and God that is holy shall be sanctified or hallowed in righteousness. Then shall the lambs feed after their manner, excuse me, in their pasture. And the waste places, or in the waste places, of the fat ones, or the rich ones, the fatlings, shall strangers eat. Woe unto them that draw iniquity, or drag iniquity and hasten his work, that we may see it. And let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come, that we may know it. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, and put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward or a bribe and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth, or the tongue devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff. So their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word, despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Or therefore is a fire devoureth the stubble. It's the tongue of fire. Sorry about that. It's his tongue of fire. Remember, our Lord God in heaven is a consuming fire. Therefore is the anger of the, of the Lord kindled, and that's like build a fire, against his people. And he has stretched forth his hand against them, and hath smitten or stricken them. And the hills did tremble, and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. Or were as refuge, garbage. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. He's not done. And he will lift up an ensign, or a banner to the nations from far, and will hiss, or whistle, unto them from the end of the earth, and behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. None shall be weary nor stubble, stumble among them. None shall slumber nor sleep. Neither shall the girdle or the belt on their loins be loosed, nor the latchet or the strap of their sandals be broken, whose arrows are sharp and all their bows bent. Their horses' hooves shall be counted like flint, and their wheels like a whirlwind. Their roaring shall be like a lion. They shall roar like young lions. Yea, they shall roar and lay hold of the prey and shall carry it away safe, and none shall deliver it. And in that day they shall roar against them like a roaring of the sea. And if one look unto the land, behold, darkness and sorrow or distress and the light is darkened in the heavens thereof by the clouds. So here when he's saying that he's going to enable the enemy, he's going to call them. And they're going to come to Israel. And they're going to get them. And he's saying that, that their, their belts aren't going to come loose. Their shoes aren't going to break. I'm going to enable them <laughs> to come and do my will upon you. 
and there's nothing that anyone can do to stop them. And as always, <laughs> I love you.